So good afternoon. Welcome to the press conference after the extraordinary EPSCO Council today. The Croatian Minister of Health, uh, Mr. Vili Beroš, and uh, the European Commissioner for Health and Food Safety, Ms. Stella Kiriakides, will present you the outcome of the meeting. Afterwards, the floor will be open for questions. Minister, please, you have the floor. Thank you. As you very well know, the first case of the new corona virus uh, broke out uh, in China in December of 2019. And in the past weeks, uh, the epidemiological situation escalated and uh, cases uh, uh, happened uh, in five documents uh, and in the EU on the 24th of January. The Croatian presidency on the 28th of January activated the arrangement for the coordinated political response in the regime of information exchange, uh, crisis reports exchange, analytical exchanges, platform for exchange, and uh, data collection, and the contact point uh, 24 slash 7. And, um, on the same day, upon the initiative of France, the mechanism for civil protection of the European Union was activated in order to provide consular assistance for the repatriation of EU citizens from Wuhan. Six meetings were held within the framework of the Commission of the Health Care Committee for the purpose of collecting real-time information related to epidemiological situation in each member state. On February 7th, the Croatian presidency held a video conference at high level, and apart from the representatives of member states, there were other representatives of uh, the uh, ECDC and uh, the European Commission, and uh, we reviewed the current situation and discussed uh, matters from uh, the angle of public health. Member States uh, confirmed the high degree of preparedness and uh, some disparities uh, in the scope uh, of mechanisms and uh, arrangements uh, bearing uh, in mind uh, the different epidemiological situations in countries that have had cases of the virus and those that have not. It was concluded that all Member States conduct measures uh, from informing uh, to uh, supervision and have uh, modern diagnostic equipment and in most cases uh, have a sufficient quantity of protection uh, equipment. Uh, however, there is concern considering the future supply of active substances for uh, medication mostly produced in China. After the video conference, uh, the Croatian presidency prepared the conclusions of the Council on Coronavirus that were adopted today at the EBSCO Council meeting at which the ministers of health discussed the measures undertaken and um, pointing out uh, the uh, common ground in the understanding of the situation and for the improvement of the national coordinating and preparedness systems with the objective of improving public health. Dr. Ryan of the World Health Organization presented the statistical data um, at the global level and uh, reported on the activities of the World Health Organization and uh, praised the, the cooperation with China. He also pointed out uh, the need for the intense cooperation in research and development in order to develop uh, the medical response uh, to coronavirus. The director of uh, the uh, 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 ECDC, Dr. Eamon, confirmed the high degree of preparedness uh, within the European Union and uh, reported that uh, the um, level of diagnostical capacities in order to continue on uh, detecting new cases uh, and subsequently the implementation of uh, healthcare measures. 
She also indicated uh, the importance of information exchange in real time and um, timely informing of the public based on uh, scientific evidence. The ministers of uh, member states uh, also indicated the need uh, for researching uh, the uh, possibility of a common approach uh, and uh, facing up to challenges that such unforeseen uh, situations can have uh, to uh, medication and uh, medical equipment supply. The conclusions uh, indicate the need uh, to ensure uh, public health uh, uh, care and also strengthen coordination between uh, member states uh, in the area of monitoring, uh, diagnostics and treatment uh, and timely communication with the uh, objective of uh, improving uh, research and development. The Commission is invited to a closer cooperation and uh, support uh, that it provides to member states in the area of supervision and risk management uh, as well as uh, uh, developing uh, medical response. The Commission can support uh, member states uh, with financial mechanisms in order to ensure availability of medication and equipment. Therefore, Europe talks uh, thinks is getting ready and is cautious. Thank you. Commissioner, please, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Um, today was a very important discussion at uh, EU political level regarding the development of the situation which um, since yesterday is called the COVID-19 virus. And I very much welcome and supported the initiative of holding this meeting today. In view of the changing situation, the developing situation, uh, and the variety of measures taken by different member states, uh, it is in my view, it was very timely uh, to have this discussion, and I want to thank the Croatian Presidency for uh, calling the Council today, uh, so that we were able to have a discussion on uh, preparedness and coordination um, at the political level, so thank you. The core of the outbreak um, remains in uh, China, where 99% of the, of the cases are located. And so far, um, as you know, um, only a few cases have been reported uh, and confirmed in the EU. But of course, we all know viruses know no borders. So it is extremely important that we had this meeting so that we have this uh, close co coordination. Uh, member states uh, overall have uh, strong healthy systems and are well prepared to deal with the potential cases of COVID-19 uh, virus. Um, and they, we heard today that they're taking all the necessary measures uh, for um, isolation, for case management, for contact um, uh, tracing. However, we also stress that there is a need for continued vigilance uh, by member states in case the situation as it stands uh, today um, deteriorates. Uh, in the EU, this would mean having uh, adequate hospital and laboratory facilities, detection capabilities, and of course the availability of protective uh, equipment. We are currently finalizing the assessments on stock levels, especially regarding uh, personal protective equipment, and today, I informed the ministers that we are indeed ready to launch joint procurement with member states to procure more equipment. One of the issues that was raised um, several times was on the concerns of the possible shortage of medicines. And I would like to once again emphasize that the European Medicinal Authority has already looked into this. And so far, uh, there have been no uh, shortages reported. Um, but um, the networks have already been put into place. An ad hoc emergency task force for preliminary overview of the situation is looking at it, and we're monitoring it uh, through the European Medicinal Authority. Um, an important message I had to member states today, and I want to re-emphasize given this opportunity, is that coordination and information is key, and measures need to be both proportionate and science-based in line with ECDC and WHO recommendations. Uh, I think that this is very important that we re-emphasize this. 
continued vigilance and um, preparedness globally means continuing to support efforts taken to contain the virus and to reduce the risk of it spreading further, uh, including stepping up support to China. And um, we will respond to the call of WHO to support countries which, may, which have more fragile health systems in an effort to, to contain the virus. In concluding, I want to say that we need to work together in order to be as effective as possible, have a coherent EU uh, response uh, to the COVID-19 virus, and that the only way that we are going to be able to deal with this challenge is to really uh, work uh, in a coordinated and effective way. Together, we're always stronger in our responses, and I take the opportunity again to thank the Croatian Presidency for calling this Council. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. The floor is now open for questions. Please mention your name and the media that you are representing. Uh, <clears throat> yes, Giovanna Del Re for the Italian newspaper Avenire. I have a question for both the Minister and the Commissioner. Um, it was added into, uh, under pressure from Germany, uh, a wording in the, in the draft saying that uh, uh, the travelers arriving or in transit from affected areas can be asked to provide information as to whether they have been in contact with persons from those areas. Can you just explain any more? Because they have been to China, of course they have been in contact with people, but shall I say old passengers of a train or people I met on the street? What does it mean? Thank you. I thank you for the question. There was no pressure. We discussed the matter as we should always do in order to reach uh, the best uh, solution. Some uh, countries were opposed to this uh, proposal at the beginning because uh, in our opinion, it is not easy uh, to enumerate all those contacts technically. However, if uh, we consider the safety area of the European Union, we all agreed uh, that uh, a slightly uh, changed text uh, should be added to the text of conclusions. So it was aligned and fine-tuned during the discussion. So there was no pressure. We discussed the matter and uh, we all work together to defend the European Union from a more problematic situation than it is today. And uh, at this point in time, there isn't a large number of people diseased. Can I just add to that? Thank you, because I think the question was also addressed to me. I just wanted to add a comment to that today we took note of the conclusions agreed, and I want to stand and really emphasize on the importance, and we welcome the united approach uh, taken today by Member States on the way forward. I think that this is uh, the point that we need to take home with us uh, today, one of the most important points. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Adam Parsons from Sky News. I'm sure you have seen in Wuhan the speed at which an outbreak has become an epidemic. And I'm sure today you've looked at a worst case scenario. Could Europe cope with an outbreak at the speed of the one that we have seen in China? It is our task to do all in our power to be prepared for combating. Uh, and however, in uh, history, we had uh, large epidemics that uh, spread at that time. However, our healthcare systems in most EU countries are more modern, are more are stronger, and I cannot claim that we shall be able to uh, respond to all challenges absolutely. But uh, as this council indicated we are on the path to the resolution of uh, such situations and we need to be prepared to the utmost. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, I prefer not to speculate. I think that the whole reason that we had the Council today, and I think it was so important, is there was exactly to assess where we are now, the level of, um, of preparedness, and what we need also to, to, 
take into consideration uh, uh, in terms of our health systems. So I would, uh, I would say that uh, all member states um, confirm that they have uh, uh, action plans in place, they have a, a, a good level of preparedness, and that uh, they're going to continue working closely together. Some calls that were um, uh, issues that were identified, uh, and I have already mentioned it in my opening statement, which may call for um, uh, joint action um, procurement on, on protective equipment. We are already going to take this into account to move forward. So uh, I think that this was the whole um, the point of the Council today, was exactly to see where we stand, that the measures are being taken, the health systems, uh, as the situation stands uh, now, are able to cope, and we are um, also looking at how we can further assist Member States. Thank you. Thank you, Carmen Pan, Healthcare Reporter with Politico. If I could just pick up on the question of my Italian colleague, which I felt wasn't responded, could you explain what you mean by contact? How many people would a person coming from the affected area have to list as contact? Would it be their immediate contacts that they shared a room with? Would it be obviously a train or a plane which they cannot share? Can you explain a bit how exactly that measure would be applied? And um, Commissioner, on the procurement, is it, so is it gonna happen? Or if not, what else do you need to make it happen? And where would it be clear whether there would be a joint procurement or not? And um, on the issue of travel, um, can you confirm that there are right now three European countries that have banned or are about to ban flights from China? Italy is one, Czech Republic apparently is another one, and Greece is the third one. Can you, can you clarify that? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Now, uh, about contact. Uh, that was a matter of dispute and that is why it took us uh, as long uh, to deliberate on that and identify a common uh, position. From uh, the professional point of view, one can say that it's not possible to enumerate all contacts, but the fear of importing the virus into the European Union indicates the need of obtaining a certain information related to contact. We considered all options. However, the contact uh, means uh, close contact uh, with uh, an infected person. So uh, stay in uh, the affected area, of course, does not mean that you can enumerate all uh, the contacts. Uh, and we did not opt for that measure right away. However, having in mind uh, the fear of importing uh, the virus, we think this is a satisfactory compromise solution. Uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, I'll be very brief. We are ready to move uh, ahead with joint procurement, and I have no information, uh, or I'm not aware of any uh, Greek measures. Thank you. Thomas? Thank you. I have two technical questions. I hope they're not too technical, and it probably is for the Commissioner. Um, there are new um, uh, rules concerning MedTech that will uh, enter into force in the end of May uh, in the European Union concerning, I, I know that they concern prothesis, but also other medical equipment. I, I was wondering whether this could create any problems uh, related to the, the procurement of the adequate uh, uh, material if the, the issues were in, in any way uh, related. And the second thing, I don't know if you can confirm what I read, but that the, the actually quite a lot of material uh, for the medical equipment uh, needed comes from, uh, from China, that China is one of the main uh, exporters for these things into the European Union. Thank you very much. Uh, in the relation to your first question, it is unrelated. Uh, and in relation to your second question, yes, it is true that a large uh, amount 
almost, I think, 50 percent of, uh, of the protective uh, equipment is produced in China. This, uh, we're aware of that. Member states have already, and we have com communicated with uh, industry within the European Union to see uh, how that they can uh, um, follow up on, on increased supplies. So we are looking at this uh, very closely, monitoring it very closely, um, so that uh, we are able to step in uh, if this is needed. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It's James Crisp from the Daily Telegraph here. Uh, two quick questions, if I uh, may. Is closing uh, the Schengen zone to Chinese visitors an option if the epidemic escalates? And how are you coordinating uh, with countries outside the EU, such as the UK or uh, Switzerland? Uh, what we keep emphasizing is that the situation needs to be monitored uh, on an hourly basis. Of course, if uh, epidemiologically it escalates, we shall undertake other actions. If that means the closing of borders, we shall discuss it. And in line with the national legislation, we shall uh, bring uh, the appropriate response. Could you repeat your second question, please? Uh -huh. Duh. Yes, there are numerous informal contacts between healthcare representatives in various countries, but the healthcare community and the scientific community does have a communication. Right. Uh, the situation, as I said, um, at the moment uh, uh, does not uh, call for these measures, and I, I think that we need to to be positive in that the measures being taken by member states and, uh, and by China um, uh, will um, uh, contain, uh, contain the virus. Uh, in relation to your second question, I wanted to make be absolutely clear that both the UK and Switzerland are uh, uh, very close cooperation with the, uh, with the EU and with the services. They are um, members of the um, uh, of the Health Security Committee. The UK is a member of the Health Security Committee and they're also, both the UK and then Switzerland also came in, uh, are, are briefed regularly from the early warning response system so that there is a very, very close cooperation as needs to be in this situation. David Carretta, Radio Radicale. Two questions if I may. I'm a little bit confused on the flight uh, from and to China, because uh, uh, you say that uh, member states should follow uh, 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 guidelines by um, the OMS, uh, but at the same time uh, uh, there are member states who are following, uh, let's say, their guidance or closing uh, routes uh, to and from China. Um, so if you can cl clarify that. Second question, it's a political one. Do you trust China in this moment? We have seen, uh, uh, um, for example, today a uh, uh, jump in the number of cases after uh, China changed its, cri its criteria to, com to, 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 to count the cases of coronavirus and so on. So do, do, do you trust China? Thank you. That may be the mother of all questions, but uh, I think then that in a way we do trust China. There are international organizations present there, and uh, we can have such uh, data confirmed. As regards the flights, I think uh, that is outside the scope of uh, the EBSCO Council, and um, this perhaps should be tackled uh, elsewhere, but this is an extraordinary situation, and uh, it requires such measures, and it shifts the frontiers and uh, requires uh, communication between councils uh, for the resolution of this problem. Uh, in relation to your first question, um, as uh, I have said several times and in the past, 
WHO has been very clear that there is no need uh, at the moment on restrictions on travel and trade from affected countries. And uh, I trust that member states would uh, adhere to this. Of course, such decisions will always be a member states' competence and member state decisions. Uh, in relation to um, uh, your second question, I want to reiterate again that uh, there is a close cooperation uh, with, uh, with China, both at the level of WHO and also at the level of ECDC. And in fact, uh, we have uh, two, day, two days ago, if I'm not mistaken, set up an expert working committee uh, with China so that there will be close cooperation and rapid exchange of information on all levels uh, so that we're able to monitor the situation. This is about um, providing the support to China who are really trying to contain the virus because this is the only way we're going to be able to be effective at the member state level and at the EU level as well. Thank you. We'll take one more question, please. Thank you. A practical question. My, my name is Philippe Prenier from News Paper Le Soir. How can we understand that um, even with this coordination between member states and the Commission, um, there are some, some checks in place in uh, certain airports, even for intra-EU uh, flights, and not in, in others. How, 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 can, how can the public understand that? Thank you. I, I can reply in the following way. There is coordination, and uh, during the last weekend, I talked uh, to most health ministers of the EU, and we discussed uh, that uh, the situation. It largely depends on uh, the national legislation and uh, the approach of the epidemiological service, which takes uh, decisions in the context of each particular country. So the decision is to exchange experiences, coordinate actions, and uh, base uh, what we do on experience. And uh, at this point of, in time, uh, in our view, current epidemiological measures are appropriate, but if the situation changes, we shall take further steps. And that is why coordination and communication is of utmost importance. The Croatian presidency understands its responsibility, and that is why we have taken these steps uh, called uh, the meeting in order to uh, deliberate on uh, the situation and the problems. Of course, professionals and experts will uh, give us uh, and point the way we should uh, uh, go and uh, the epidemiological measures to be undertaken. Currently, the health uh, supervision is appropriate in Europe. Uh, there are uh, situations that uh, uh, perhaps uh, are different, but globally seen, I think that the response of Europe is appropriate. Thank you very much. Um, I will uh, again go back to the importance of the Health Council that was held that we had today because I think that this really allowed for member states and the uh, uh, health ministers to, to be able to share the different uh, information and how the measures that they are all taking. Um, we of course um, support that they should follow the instructions, uh, the guidelines rather than instructions as given by WHO and DCDC. Um, it is very important that there is coordination on this and that there is uh, information provided um, uh, to, uh, to those traveling. Um, I also wanted to, to tell you that we have funded a joint action called uh, uh, Healthy Gateways uh, precisely for this pur purpose to produce detailed advice for uh, carriers and health authorities uh, regarding um, uh, appropriate measures and management at points of entry. So a lot is being done. I will uh, never stop saying that we do have an evolving situation that we need to monitor very 
closely, but what I can assure you is uh, that the Commission is uh, really uh, working uh, very intensely on this and uh, across uh, different commissioners uh, and uh, on a daily basis with all our agencies and all our services uh, so that we're able to uh, uh, follow the developments as closely as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Commissioner. I want to add to this that uh, the fast uh, action in informing the EU citizens and especially travelers and those exposed to an increased risk of infection is of crucial importance. So promptness uh, in providing information is crucial. And this concludes today's press conference. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.